Hello again everybody, this is Craig Evans of Autism Hangout and thank you for tuning into this Autism Hangout special report. Well, we're on the road today, we're doing the first of our interviews with the folks at the Autism Hangout Farmers Market. Thanks for tuning in, but today we're going to learn about gluten-free baking. Hey everybody, meet one of the members of the Autism Hangout Farmers Market. This is Janelle Meyer of Black Barn Bakery. Hi. How are people responding to your gluten-free products? It's a combination of surprise and exuberance, I would say. Uh, people are surprised that our products taste good, and they're happy that there is this kind of an offering in this kind of a venue, because typically people that have any sort of food sensitivities are automatically excluded from any sort of treats. Can I offer you a sample? Uh, absolutely, I'd love a sample. These are pumpkin cookies. They were made this morning. Okay. They're dairy-free and egg-free, as well as gluten-free. Oh my gosh, the flavor is great, the texture is great. These cookies, because of the pumpkin, they stay soft for a long time. You can keep these on the counter, they will be soft four and five days after you make them initially. So when you go about finding the ideal texture and the ideal flavor, what do you gauge it against? I mean, is it something that your mom used to cook or do you go out and sample the finest bakeries? Why do you come up with this? The way I come about it is that we have a built-in taste test panel at our house. And that is who? My son and myself. Between the two of us, we have almost all of what's called the top eight common allergens. And my daughter and husband are asymptomatic, so we have a foot in both worlds. Okay. So I use my daughter and husband as the controls. Okay. They are the ones that give me the yay or the nay. And then I use my son as just the general, is it good, is it not? He's five, so he's very tactless at this age, which is great. That's kind of feedback that we need. You know, I almost taste a little ginger in that. Is there is some. Oh my gosh, that was good. You got any other samples I can try? No, not today. Okay. I usually make just one sample at a time. Okay, so in addition to that, let's talk about some of the products. I know you make banana breads, and I know you make other cookies. What is your product line? We use, we make banana bread. The banana bread is the best seller by far. Mm -hmm. And what I tell people is that when they're on the fence about what to buy, mm -hmm. I tell them, do the banana bread. It's pretty hard to screw it up. It's one pan. You don't have to babysit them like cookies. Uh, next in line would be probably our pumpkin products. Pumpkin's kind of this miracle food in that it's um, adding additional moisture and additional sweetness without additional fat uh, and without additional sugar. And you're also eating the rainbow, as they say. Uh, we have pumpkin cookies, which you just sampled, which are very soft, mm -hmm. like a cakey cookie. Yes. We also have what's called pumpkin donut muffins. A couple of Christmases ago, I was bound to determine my son was going to try a donuts. He can't do the Dunkin' Donuts, so I decided to look on Amazon, our friend, and find a pan that I could bake donuts in. And that's where the pumpkin donut muffin recipe came from. It's something that you can make donuts with or you can make muffins with. And the same with chocolate donuts. The chocolate donuts can be made as actual baked donuts, not fried, or you can make them in like a little 8x8 pan as brownies. We okay. do that at our house a lot. We divvy them up into little pieces, throw them in the freezer, and then we can throw them back into lunches if you need a quick sugar buzz that works for you. Okay, so uh, I, I know your products are like gluten-free. Yes. Um, what other uh, ingredients are not included in yours that you typically find in a store-bought brand? We do not use any soy or corn. Our mixes are considered top eight free. So the baking powder we're using is a non-corn based baking powder. We're using a combination of white rice flour and tapioca flour. The combination of both of those has a good tongue feel. It's very smooth on the palate, not dry and grainy. Uh, so top eight free, just to review, wheat, dairy, egg, soy, corn, tree nut, peanut, shellfish. Outstanding, oh my gosh, okay. So you've, you've found a product that tastes good and looks good, but how about preparation? Do you have to go through a lot of different things to prepare this, or is it pretty straightforward? It's very straightforward. We tried to mirror our mix instructions like Betty Crocker or Duncan Hines would. Uh, we give you the list of the wet to add, and then we give you the baking instructions. The wet to add, if milk is an issue, you can use a milk substitute, or you can use a dairy substitute. It's an equivalent. 
uh, if you're familiar with Geranimals, where you had to mix and match the tags, that's the idea we were going for. So if eggs are an issue, you can use an egg substitute that's equivalent to one egg. Mm -hmm. And then our instructions are basically mix the dry with the wet, put it in your pan, bake it. Okay, so it's that straightforward. But it, uh, I do know that you're just finishing up a brand new website, which I'm going to put across the screen here. It's uh, blackbarnbakery.com. Yes. And I do know that in some certain situations for your products, that you're preparing videos for how to cook, if there are some idiosyncrasies. Yes, yes. It, this is actually some feedback from one of my husband's co-workers who said, I like the banana, or excuse me, it was pan uh, pancakes. I like the pancakes, but mine got a little browner than I was expecting. Uh, so we're going to do a little bit of one-on-one -on -one with that and talk about what kind of temperatures work well so that you're not getting black on the outside and raw in the middle. Sure. Okay, so what are the products that you make? Banana bread is our most popular product. It's very easy to make. The wet ingredients to add. The hardest thing is to get brown bananas, but really that's not very hard at all. And then the baking instructions. It's one pan. Throw it in the oven. Watch it come up. And you'll want to make sure that it's done in the middle, so add either a, a toothpick or a knife and make sure it comes out clean and then you're done. Pumpkin donut muffins. The ingredient list is listed on the front of all of our packaging. The back side gives you the wet ingredients to add and then the baking instructions. Molasses cookies. Again, these smell great when they're baking. The wet ingredients to add and the baking instructions. Okay. I make these with a melon baller, and when I make them with a melon baller, I get 60 cookies at a time. 60, okay. 60 at a time. Pancakes are a winner with small kids and older adults. I'm not sure why, but everybody loves them. And I think the secret is that we suggest adding applesauce. Applesauce. Adds, adds moisture and sweetness without that additional sugar or oil content. How did you discover that secret? Trial and error. Okay. Now while we're at it, I, I do know that you, do, you don't use any artificial sugars. Uh, what do you use for sugar? We use white sugar right now. I've been experimenting with my family with agave, also with honey. Uh, I've experimented a tiny bit with stevia, and I'm on the fence on stevia. But agave nectar seems to be working pretty well. Be able, we're able to replicate what our products look like. Uh, it has to pass the look test for my son, and it does pass a taste test as well. So we're refining that a little bit. Excellent. Next one. Oh, chocolate donuts. Chocolate donuts, just the smell alone, is a treat. These, as I mentioned, can also be made into brownies. You'll just have to lengthen the baking time. I know you're busy in lots of farmers markets. Yes. This just happens to be one for autism hangout. But uh, if people want to come and see you in person, uh, is there something in your website they can do to find out where you are? Yes, we have a section on our web website called Events and Appearances, and we have a Google calendar that lists where we are and when we're there. And we also give small little shout outs for specific events. One specific event that is coming up in September is the Food Allergy Resource Fair in Hopkins, Minnesota. And we have a small write up about that particular event. Okay, now write ups. I do know that you've got a blog on your website too. Yes. So for those that aren't in the Minnesota area, if they wanted to learn about some of the things that you experienced at this upcoming conference, will you be reporting on what you find? Oh yes. We're rather chatty at our house and so we're going to spread the word as much as we can. We're all in this together and rather than reinvent the wheel, we're interested in spreading this kind of information to everyone because everyone's time is precious and everyone's looking for good information. Okay, and I do know that you're out there a lot. You read, you study, you talk to people when they ask you for new products. Yes. So in addition to your blog, is there a newsletter or something people can sign up for at your website? Yes, we have a sign-in option for a newsletter. It gives you a dollar off on your next order if Excellent. you do sign up. We need a little dangling carrot here. <laughs> Again, we're sharing information and we expect people to share information with us as well. That's the only way we're going to improve and get good quality products out there. Okay, this is excellent. Do you want to give your website address again? For sure. www.blackbarnbakery.com. Okay. And I'm Janelle. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thanks, Janelle. Thank you, Craig.